and welcome to Physics Chat. I'm Susanna and I'm back with Joe and Sergi, ready to do some more chatting. Physics Chat is a show where we talk to a variety of physicists about everything, from their research to the story of how they became a physicist. On today's show, we have the lovely Dan, who is a second year PhD student at the University of Portsmouth. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being on the show. So tell me, are you having a good day? I am having a wonderful day because today is very special. Um, everyone here who knows me knows I'm very excited about today's date. Um, and anyone should be excited about today's date because it is the 22nd of February, 2022. And that means if you, if you write today's date down, it says 22 slash 2 slash 22. Even if you write the American way, it says 2 slash 22 slash 22. It's all the twos, right? And when you, th- that's amazing in itself, sure. But then you look at the day <laughs> and you wake up and you realize it's Tuesday today. So happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, <laughs> but you might think, but Dan, I write the day as 22 slash 02 slash 2022. There are all these zeros in the way. That's, that's, you've ruined it. But even that is a palindrome. <laughs> so it's a number that's the same backwards as forwards. Um, I, I, I did my research and I was like, what about like the year 2222? What, what day is the 22nd of February? And it's a Friday. So that's rubbish. <laughs> We're very lucky to be on today. And of course, it's episode two of Physics Chat. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Dan, um, maybe getting back on track. Can you tell us a little bit about what your research is on? Sure. So when I'm not um, getting very excited about stupid little mathematical coincidences, I um, am interested in galaxies. I'm interested in um, gravity and the geometry of the universe and um, specifically something called gravitational lensing. Mm, Okay. So yeah, galaxies, gravity, I think most of us have heard that stuff before, but gravitational lensing is a new one. Can you just explain that? Mm -hmm. So... Um, if I may use an analogy, here in the Institute of Cosmology and Gravitation in Portsmouth, just over the water, we have the Isle of Wight. Um, and that's a very nostalgic place for me. I went on um, many childhood holidays over there. Um, and a few times while we were over there, I visited, um, there's like a, a glass blowing studio. Um, and you can watch people blowing glass into interesting shapes. They reflect light in very interesting ways so um if you look at an object through a a slightly distorted piece of glass um that object itself looks a little bit distorted right um it's light sort of follows the contours of the um of the the bending of a glass what i study is that effect on the night sky um you have to zoom in very far to see it because these imperfections don't happen over huge scales but um if you look closely enough, you'll see that the universe itself is a little bit bent um, in places, a little bit warped. And some of the galaxies that we see um, appear in this really weird sort of magnified way. Um, And it's not because of some misshapen lens in the telescope. It's due to gravity itself in front of some of these galaxies are other Other galaxies have clusters of galaxies that are very massive and are bending the space and are bending the light. And we have a gravitational lens um, that is magnifying these very distant objects, which is A, very beautiful, as I'm sure you can see by the lovely pictures on the screen, but B, very useful to cosmology. There's lots of measurements you can make of this effect that um, are also in turn become measurements of the entire universe. I'm assuming there's a fair number of these lenses. Is the one that's your favorite in particular? There is. Um, the one I'm studying um, doesn't look particularly remarkable. Uh, if you look at the picture, um, it just looks like a fairly standard Einstein ring. It's sort of two bright arcs, um, which is two bright arcs of the same object. So that's pretty cool. But if you look closely, you'll see um, another set of arcs um, at a sort of larger radius. We have a double Einstein ring going on. Um, and that's exceptionally special because that means we have a galaxy that is lensing a background galaxy into a, into a ring. But behind both of those galaxies, there's way further back, another third galaxy being lensed by both of them. Um, 
so we have this by chance alignment of three galaxies in a row um, that we can see in, in this weird configuration, which is super special and very rare. And there are almost no lenses that do this, right? So this is really cool in itself. But then you think, is that actually rare? Behind any galaxy surely is between that galaxy and the entire rest of the universe, there's some other light, right? Surely. Mm. Turns out, if you look even deeper, it is a triple. Um, there are four galaxies in a row, one lens, and then three galaxies all lined up behind into wonderful um, lens shapes. Can't even describe how rare that is because it is the only one we know that does this. Um, not to blow your minds even more, but it's actually five galaxies in a row, right? Because it's also the Milky Way has to be there in order for us to see them all. So yeah, very rare. And I'm very, this is what I'm basing my PhD around so far. It's this one object because it's so special and there's so much you can do with it. Um, so I try to sort of reconstruct all the lensing that's going on to learn about the physics um, of the galaxies and in turn the physics of gravity and the physics of the universe that is causing this to happen. So I know I'm not the only one on this episode of Physics Chat who has looked at lensing before. So, Susanna, what is your favourite gravitational lens? Oh, that's going back a while there. Um, <laughs> I think it's, oh, I think it was called Supernova Restal. I think that was my favourite. That is a good choice. Who doesn't have a favourite gravitational lens, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so could you, I don't remember a lot, so tell yeah, me more about that. Supernova Restal is... The name given to a supernova that went off in a galaxy cluster. So there's lots of galaxies being lensed. Refstal was a was a, a, a Norwegian astronomer, a Norwegian astrophysicist who um, postulated that you could measure how fast the universe is expanding if you measured a um, lensed supernova, which is a wacky concept. But what happens is in a supernova, if you see a supernova in a galaxy, you see that galaxy looking perfectly normal for a while, and then over the course of a few days, there'll be one point inside it that gets very, very bright and then fades away again. What that means is a star has exploded. That's what a supernova is. If that galaxy is one that happens to have been lensed into more than one image of itself, the light from that galaxy has traveled more than one different path, and those paths are different lengths. So that means that one image of the galaxy on the sky will be a bit older than the other image. So if you see a supernova go off in a, in a lensed galaxy, you will see that supernova again in the other image a bit later with a measurable time delay between the two. And that time delay is sensitive to the expansion rate of the universe. And this is a very, very cool bit of physics, really powerful tool for measuring. We really want to know what the expansion rate of the universe is. It's a huge problem in cosmology. Well, this was the first observed lens supernova in, in a galaxy cluster. So that is a good choice for a favorite lens because it's a very exciting one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me, Dan, I'm interested to know a bit more about, about your story. Um, how did you get where you are now? Um, so I took a slightly unusual route in that when I came out of school and wanted to go to university, I had done physics, um, I had done music, and I liked both of them. So I was like, physics seems sensible career-wise, I suppose, um, over music, but Music is a, a passion of mine. I, I played piano. Um, uh, I didn't want to give it up. So I found a course at Cardiff at the time was doing physics and music together. Um, so that's what I went to study for my bachelor's degree. And my research project was on like the vibrations of piano strings. Um, which wow, is so cool. it, it combined physics and music then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. cool. Yeah. Um, I then decided... Okay, that's cool. Um, it's a bit much to do these subjects. Let's probably narrow it down by now. Um, after that, I, I kind of wanted to stay and study. And I kind of felt like I wasn't done with physics yet. When you study two subjects at once, you can't explore everything. Um, you can't anyway, but, you know, even more so. Um, so I was like, I've not done any astrophysics yet. That sounds cool. So I did a master's degree in astrophysics. Um, and that's where I encountered all this, all the cosmology, all the galaxy stuff, um, but still didn't really work on it properly. My, my research project then was actually um, a, a cool project I did in virtual reality. Um, I uh, rendered a load of like procedurally generated galaxies in this 3D space that you could fly through in VR. It was 
amazing, <laughs> but still nothing to do with the real research. And this PhD really is my first go at actual cosmology. Um, so that that is my interesting story. So I would say that, you know, don't let an unorthodox route, ev everyone has a different story on how they got to where they got to, especially when you get to this sort of high level. At a university, it can feel a bit like, okay, everyone's kind of the same here. We all had to go through some strictly regimented school system to, to get to this position, usually. Um, but especially at this high level, everyone everyone gets there differently. Um, don't be put off if, you know, you, you feel like you're, you're off the path a little bit so far. You're not quite where you want to be yet. It'll happen if you're passionate. The fact that I did do such weird, interesting things actually made me a really good interview candidate because I could... <laughs> I, people were fascinated to hear about these projects they never usually get to hear about um so i sounded passionate and that's all you need to do to get into you know research just sound passionate be passionate sound passionate and you'll get there that's amazing by the way i have to tell i have heard dan playing the piano and he's absolutely <laughs> amazing like i was yeah blown away <laughs> um thank you so now now that you're doing a phd in physics um what what do you think is the best thing about doing a phd not just in physics, but maybe research in general. What would you say? So the thing about a PhD is, is it's the best way to utilize all the knowledge you've learned and all the interest you have in a subject. You could very well come out of a master's degree and get literally any job that pays more than a PhD does. You ask for positives, I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but, but the thing positive is... Positive stand, positive. Yes, yes, yes. But... That's not why we do it, because we get into it. And a PhD is a job that lets you do what you want to do on the days you want to do it. Like you can you can go to work one day and think, um, I don't want to work on that problem. It's stressing me out. I found this other interesting thing that I could look at into. Mm -hmm. And you go to a PhD supervisor and be like, yeah, that sounds really cool. You should, you should look into that a bit more. Um, and you can set your own hours and you can, uh, you know, within reason. You, you can explore what's interesting to you. And there is no real other job I think that does that in the same way a PhD does um, and, and I will spend three or four years studying this one super niche stupid little topic um, which I think is fascinating and I will get to call myself doctor for the rest of my life and and, and take this interest into my identity you know um, forever and I think that's the really humble thing about about doing a PhD. I think it's um, a very special thing that we're allowed to do. What fantastic advice. I hope people are encouraged to follow their dreams no matter what route you take. Dan, thank you so much for being on Physics Chat. We really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you, Susanna. It was great being here. And thank you for joining us today. And we hope you've enjoyed hearing about Dan's story. Joe, Sergi, and myself will be back again sometime soon. So we hope you will join us then. In the meantime, let us know in the comments section what your favourite gravitational lens is and why. We would love to hear what you think. You know mine, supernova refs out, but we would love to hear yours. But for now, happy Tuesday and goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.